Here's the big story from Breitbart.com. The gayest Olympics ever. Paris Olympics opens with suggested bisexual threesome. Man, I really hate to open with that. I mean, we're trying to be we try to be family friendly, and that one just kind of hits you in the face like a sack of bricks. But uh, that's what happened, and uh, it's what people on X are saying. Both and again, both the left and the right. The left is saying, "Wow, this is awesome! It's the gayest ever," and the right's going, "Oh, geez, it's the gayest ever." So you've got a lot of that stuff. But the the issue that's really hitting people is. <laughs> Here's a question. Is YouTube going to be mad that we're showing this like half naked guy? Well, it was on TV. This is a French actor portraying Dionysus, who's the god of, well, they say the god of wine, but let's just say he's, I don't know. He's a pleasure god. Degeneracy. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. So uh, then they have a mock Last Supper with a bunch of drag queens. And uh, oh boy, are people calling this out as satanic? Clint Russell. Liberty Lockpod says this is crazy. Opening your event by replacing Jesus and the disciples at the Last Supper with men in drag. There are 2.4 billion Christians on earth, and apparently the Olympics want to declare loudly to all of them, right out of the gate, not welcome. In that shot, you can see there's like a little kid in it, too. There's a little kid in it? At, at the table, like right Oh, there. yeah, look, a mm -hmm. child. I thought that was uh, Kamala Harris's uh, next press conference. Didn't she introduce on uh, with RuPaul the other day? She should Is that be what there. She did? Yeah. Oh, that's tonight. She's like on with RuPaul. Yeah. On the on the drag she show. Taped it the other day. Oh, wow. So then uh, Clint Russell says, "I thought it couldn't get worse. It does. They put a pale horse just in case you weren't sure that this was all intentional, straight out of Revelations. WTF is happening? I kind of felt the same way. I was like, well, you know, they're." being disrespectful it's blasphemous whatever you want to call it but the pale horse on the river now that's an endeavor he says last post for the people claiming that the opening video is not depicting the last supper they even added the mock halo just to make sure you knew what you were looking at stop playing dumb quite literally and also it looks like they inverted the la they, they intentionally inverted the positions of some of the people at the at the table i think so like this pose right here in the Last Supper, it's actually the other way around with the arm going the other direction. Some of the positions are inverted. And then they have quite literally a pale horse, which is, of course, uh, uh, the horse of death. It's from Revelations. Yeah. The four horsemen. Let's see. There's the white horse. There's the uh, red horse. There's the black horse. And then the pale or green horse representing death. And uh, that's your Olympics for you. So how how you guys doing? Yeah, I mean, the... The guy may, might have wanted to hit the gym a little bit there before doing that whole blue man group workout. He's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I actually think to be Dionysus, is, it's quite literally the point. There's no effort. He wouldn't want to hit the gym. They're Got trying it. to represent laziness. Got it. Yeah. The Olympics opening ceremonies always push some kind of like multicultural, we're all the same, super progressive values, at least like in my living memory, that's what they've been like. Uh, it is disappointing to see but it's almost not surprising because it seems like anytime there's this sort of huge international stage you have to have some sort of like pro lgbt pro you know but only in the west i mean only mm -hmm. only in the west only in the west do we look at our culture and say let's just completely destroy it let's take it and flay it and uh you know. Yeah, China didn't do this. No, China had 2,008 people drumming in unison mm -hmm. to represent their collective identity. And we have this. I mean, the, you know. Well, it's Paris, to be fair. It's Paris, but do we have any doubt that something like this would happen in L.A. or London? Well, we, we're going to find out in four years. Mm -hmm. I guess we will find out. Yeah, Olympics Los Angeles, right? Uh, the one thing, too, though, is um, by the time we get to Los Angeles, maybe they'll just let men compete as women as well. They so already do. Just, in the depends, Olympics? It depends I think. on the Olympics. sport and it depends on the hormone It depends level. on the yes. sport? Oh, because it's like the, the nano mules. That's wow. right. Oh, and it's going to be like the Soviet Union all over yeah. again. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, dude. If people want to win the Olympics, they're going to win the Olympics. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, my uh, girlfriend is a former boxer. She was a Golden Gloves boxer. And she was a champion. Top of the field as, as a woman. And she said even if she worked out in the gym with guys who were like light, a little lighter than her, uh, if they really hit her like full force, she could get hurt. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's just bone density, it's, muscle mass. Yeah, it's a physiology thing. Yeah. It's a, it's the whole thing. It's just crazy that you know she feels like women fought so hard for the equality stuff and to get a woman's golden gloves, and now every mediocre guy can grow his hair long. I mean. Say his name is Hannah Claire, and I'm, he's uh, look. I got to be honest. Telling my identity. It's not a joke. <laughs> I'm 38. 
And so in terms of a skateboarding career, I'm well past my prime. But I can tell you this. <clears throat> if I competed in the women's Olympics, I'd probably I'd probably get to get the podium. You know, I got I'd be 42 at the time, so oof, I'd have to really, really push it. Well, you but, remember uh, Laurel Hub Hubbard just a couple of years ago, Laurel Hubbard, the uh, New Zealander weightlifter. Uh, weightlifter who pushed some young 20 something women out of the weightlifting category and went on to compete and, you know, screwed up. That was the Olympics. Yeah. Wow. Wasn't that the Olympics? Yeah, it was the Olympics. Yeah. But my, my real point is this. If you're a country like North Korea and you're thinking we just want to win the Olympics, we don't care. We're going to go to the whatever the rules are. Why wouldn't North Korea just be like, OK, let's send a guy. Yeah. I mean, he'll win. They probably have. But would you? Well, the be... Soviet the Soviet Union notoriously had these women who showed up just massively ripped and pumped full of testosterone. Mm -hmm. What would you go as Tina if you went into the woman? <laughs> no, Tim. You just go as Tim. Well, yeah, there's a <laughs> Timory is a female. <laughs> do you have to come up with like a fake no, no, I know I would literally do nothing. I'd keep the beard. I'd keep the clothes. I'd wear the exact same thing. And I'd say, I don't adhere to your gender, your heteronormative gender stereotypes. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've decided that I am a woman. I want the prize money. What is it? Do it, Tim. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I think there will be people incentivizing people. Like, there's no reason a country that's like, we really want to make a name for ourselves wouldn't do this. I, well, the, I, the first, second, and third place in a, in a cycling championship in Washington State, the first, second, and third place were teams. They were like pairs of teams, and each one had a man on it. Yeah. First, second, and third, men win, winning in the women's cycling Grand Prix. I thought that was absolutely absurd. Well, what do you what do you win if you if you like do you win money? They won money. I yeah, mean, but I mean, it like wasn't first that place much Olympics, money. do you win money? Oh, for the Olympics, you get gold and you get sponsorships. You get you know a lot of stuff that comes uh, along with it. Thirty seven thousand five hundred dollars for gold for gold. Thirty seven five. Twenty two thousand five for silver and fifteen thousand for bronze. Yeah, yeah. I gotta tell you. It's not I that bet much, but not worth thirty. But if you're from like a, a country yeah, but, but, that doesn't have any resources, and you're a guy, and it's like, well, I could at least get silver in a women's division. Like, if it, that money could change your life, why wouldn't you do that? No, for real. I mean, if it's about winning money, who's going to be like, I'm going to put my uh, like, look, this country said here are the rules. If you're a woman, you decide to be a woman. It's like, okay, well, you know, all right, I'll take forty grand. I think some of it is like, it's the cultural ties, right? Like. If the culture that you come from understands what you're doing and isn't like appalled by you, then you go home with glory and money. But if, if you're from a culture that's like, that's whack and we're going to mock, mock you for the rest of your life, then maybe you're not going to do it. Oh, that's dude. the only deterrent. Russia would send some hotshot 20 year old to say he's a woman. Well, Russia's not even allowed money. to compete under its own flag right now. Well, there you go. But I, I just mean like the, the mentality of a country like Russia is going to be like, rip them off and exploit them as much as you can. Yeah. They, they deserve to be exploited if they want to be. I could see that, but to Hannah Claire, what you were saying, I think humans overall, whether you say your community or your culture accepts it, I think humans overall would just internally, innately be like, that's effed up. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, I don't think it's about culture. It's about just humanity. You, you, you know when you're doing something wrong. Everyone knows when you're doing something wrong, in my view. It's like, should you choose to look the other way, but... I think people know when they're doing something wrong. I do think there are some people who feel as though the ends justify the means, right? Like they are justified to, they, they deserve whatever, you know, they are trying to achieve. And so therefore, even if they feel that like heartstring pull somewhere in their mind, they know it's wrong. There are a lot of people who, who do the wrong thing anyways, because they feel like, well, well, I deserve this or I should have this or, you know, actually this benefits me in some other way. I think that's why people get so kind of lost, right? They, they, they don't want to accept sort of the moral boundaries we all know. Uh, and so they're constantly at odds with themselves. Yeah, there's no question about that. But I think in America, they look for that now. You know, well, they're doing it, so we, we, we can all do it. And, yeah. you know, I always say, like, you know, throughout the lockdowns, we in Staten Island were, like, fighting back. I was opening up a local bar against the rules, and we were getting arrested. We were having protests and all this other oh, stuff. Oh, that was you guys? Yeah, that was us. All that right, was Max, that. Max Public yeah, House. Yeah, yeah. That was... Me leading the resistance and the um, how French of you kids who owned the uh, bar were were out of money and I met with them and I asked them well, why are you doing this why are you opening the place up well how can I help you you know I'm with the news can I bring some attention to it and they said JT maybe you don't understand this but we literally don't have any more money we opened the place we hit up our credit cards we could quit our jobs we've now hit up our parents a couple wow. times we don't have money and I remember a seminal moment talking to them thinking like. 
they're saying they don't have money anywhere in their network and their family in their pocket. And I'm just sitting there like, maybe there's days I don't have cash on me because my kids, my girlfriend hits me up all over left and right, but I could always go to an ATM. I could always go. They were literally talking to me about existential. We don't have any money. That's why we're opening. We got about three grand in, in inventory in this joint. They've taken our liquor license. We're going to sell it. And I was thinking, I got to help these kids. Mm -hmm. Then the cops came in, arrested them that night. Um, my lawyer was there with me, and I said, hey, listen, guess what? This place is a TV studio now, and tomorrow I'm going to stop broadcasting Liquid Lunch, my TV show, from here with no liquor license, um, which I did. And um, I broadcasted there for months, and we, we fought them wow. off, draping ourselves in the First Amendment. And then Saturday Night Live at that time was exempt and they were allowed to have live audience so i was doing the same mm -hmm. and i was employing the staff to give the drinks and food away for free and i said they're <laughs> all they're all props mm -hmm. these people are called these liquid people lunch. are live yeah. audiences and my show was called liquid lunch so we served drinks and people tipped healthily right on um but we fought the hell out of de blasio and uh, cuomo Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel, and we will see you all there.